And now let's go on location. For the last couple of hours, the rest of Hollywood has been getting in the milk and letting out the cat. But for the crew of production number 821, the day is well along. While the city slept, the caravan of trucks was loaded with everything from lights to lunches, from catwalks to cameras, from pins to people. Everything, tons of it. A city on wheels guarded by its own police, all just to bring life to a bundle of typewritten pages we call the script. Grip trucks, light trucks, prop trucks, wardrobe trucks, a truck for cameras, three dressing room trailers, a high lift truck, a boom truck, buses for the crew, bus loads of extras, generator trucks capable of lighting over 400 homes like yours and mine. Yes, when Warner crews go on location, they go like the U.S. Army, prepared to stay. 9.30 a.m. Here we are on a mountaintop more than a thousand feet above the city of Los Angeles, the Griffith Park Planetarium. This is our location, and this is its heart, power. A diesel-operated dynamo that produces 2,000 amperes of direct current and pushes them through 320 feet of heavy-duty cable into the connector boxes and on into this battery of man-made suns. 9.45. The high lift truck comes down onto the location proper, the planetarium parking area. And here is the camera in position for the first shot. The assistant director's voice is heard. All right, fellas, let's go. The first shot of the day is a close-up of Sal Maneo, who plays the part of a boy named Plato. In this scene, he is threatened by a gang of kids. And here are the kids. It's a quick shot, not a very complicated one. But it's now 10.30. There's a schedule to keep. All right, quiet. Quiet for rehearsal. There's the producer of Rebel Without a Cause settling a point with the script girl. A producer, you know, is a busy fellow. He's a combination of father, mother, and midwife. The picture is his baby. Oh, Dave. Hello, Gig. How are you, David? Good. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. David Weisbart. Mr. Weisbart has been working on Rebel Without a Cause for many months preparing. Is that right? That's right, Gig. As a matter of fact, about a year before we ever turned a camera. By we, I mean Stuart Stern and Irving Shulman, our two writers, and uh, Nick Ray, our director. That's Mr. Ray, seated to the left of the camera, the big fellow with the curly hair. I think I better explain right here what this picture is about. Rebel Without a Cause concerns itself with young people, boys and girls who don't understand the world, and about a world that doesn't understand them. OK, Dave? Close enough. Now, what's the action here? Quiet. Well, in the sequence we're going to shoot today, Jimmy Dean and his friend Plato, played by Sal Maneo, are cornered by a high school gang up here in the planetarium parking lot. I see, and Jimmy gets pushed around. This scene's a little more complicated. And it gets a more complicated treatment. Different angles, different setups. And the day grows, the light changes. Suddenly, it's high noon. And speaking of movie magic, presto. Swiss steak, string beans, macaroni with cheese, soup, salad, dessert, tea, milk, and coffee. For 300 people, served piping hot on top of a mountain. Pardon me, for 302 people. Here's Natalie Wood, the kind of fresh young face and macaroni-proof young figure that the movie industry is always seeking. And uh, who isn't? Hello, Natalie. Oh, hello, Gig. Please sit down. Thank you. How's the food? Best location food I ever ate. Well, I must say, you certainly seem to thrive on it. Well, I was brought up on it. I've been eating lunch on the set since I was four years old. That's correct. Natalie's a movie veteran, been in pictures since 1941. Is that correct? That's right. She played daughter and granddaughter to almost every top star in the business. Oh, but I can be a femme fatale, too. Why, in Rebel Without a Cause, I play a very bad girl. But a very pretty veteran. And if what Mr. Jack Warner tells me is correct, and I'm sure it is, we're going to be seeing a lot of you. Thank you, Gig. Thank you, Natalie Wood, and I hope you enjoy your lunch. The trouble is, you see, the sun doesn't stop for lunch. It moves right on into the afternoon, racing toward evening. Even at 2.45, shadows begin to form. And when you're working in CinemaScope and Warner Color, the sun needs help. And shot by shot, the big scene of the day is put on film. A knife fight played against the backdrop of a city far below. Each line in the script girl's master book represents a new angle, another viewpoint, perhaps a close-up of one of the boys,
Perhaps a sudden glimpse of a flashing hand, a smile, a lunge. The scene is a challenge, a duel, a dance between two boys in rebellion against the world. The film must tell it all. And as the day marches on, the lines in the typewritten page slowly grow and multiply. 545, the same scene, 11 different angles photographed on 11 different strips of film, each carefully numbered. And now, OK, boys, wrap them up. The day is done, put to bed, all through. For everybody, that is, but producer David Weisbart. 8.30 p.m., back at the studio, he's still at it, with his film editor, Bill Ziegler. I reversed those two angles, Dave. I think they're much better. Good, let's try it. You see, there's more to making a motion picture than shooting film. You have to make the film tell your story. What you saw today up at the planetarium doesn't really begin to tell the story of Rebel. That knife fight, for example, is a result, not a cause. The real cause of Rebel is here in what we call our key scene. I'd like to show it to you. No, I don't want you to go to the police. There were other people. Why should you be the only one involved? Because I am involved and you're involved. Mom, a boy was killed tonight. I don't see how we can, we can get out of that by pretending it didn't happen. Now, look, look, Jim. You know that you did wrong. That is the main thing. That's nothing. That's nothing. You told me to always tell the truth. You can't turn that off just like that. But he's not saying that. He's saying Wait. don't volunteer. Just tell a little white lie. Is that, is that what you want? You'll learn. You'll learn, Jim, when you're older. I don't think that I want to learn that way. Well, it doesn't matter anyway, because we're moving. You're not turning me loose from Well, that's news to me. Just why are we moving? Oh, do I have to spell it out? You are not going to use me as an excuse I again, don't... Mom. Oh, you. every time you, you can't face yourself, you want to move, and you say it's me, you that's say... That's not it's... true. You say it's me. She, she says it's a neighborhood. You give me all kinds of phony excuses. I just want to do one thing right. In other words, this is partly a story about parents. It has to be. Good or bad, all young people have them. You're so right. Thank you very much, David Weisbart, and thank you, Bill Ziegler. Good night. Good night. Well, there you have a day in the life of production 821, otherwise known as rubble without a cause. I'll be back in a moment to tell you about next week's Behind the Cameras.